Hello everyone, or should I say hello senior developer and senior app developer S? Either way, I know I promised that I would make a video about how to create a RabbitMQ cluster using Docker images. So in this video, I plan on showing you exactly that. I will give you two options, or I will show you two versions that you can use to set up a local RabbitMQ cluster. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So I created this short document, this readme detailing the setup with both versions. And we're going to start looking at how to launch the cluster using Docker run. So we're going to first, we need a, a master node. So we will have to copy this command over and don't stress everything will be committed and pushed to a GitHub repository after I finish with the video. And I will add the repository URL into the video description. So let's copy this command. First, let me explain it. So we're using the plain Docker run command. We're launching whatever we're launching in daemon mode. So this means that it runs in the background. We're giving it a name. We'll give, we're giving it a host name as well. And we're setting two environment variables which are required by RabbitMQ in order for clustering to work. So it needs an Erlang cookie and it needs a node name. And RabbitMQ will use this node name for clustering. Then we're mounting two volumes. And when I will commit this, the, this PWD command will look something like this with a dollar sign in front of it. And this is used by bash to evaluate PWD, this command, and just place the output here. But I'm using fish and fish is a little weird. So it will, it requires only the parentheses to evaluate the command. If I add the dollar sign, it won't execute. So we're mounting the RabbitMQ configuration that I have here. Uh, we're mounting it to etsy RabbitMQ RabbitMQ config and also definitions.json. So this JSON file actually contains my RabbitMQ setup. So the users, the, the permissions for each user, the queues, the routing keys, the exchanges, everything you'd want from, from a RabbitMQ setup but we're going to go through that a bit later. We're mounting these volumes. We're also publishing some ports. Um, you may ask why that many ports, because these are all the ports that I could find that RabbitMQ uses. And when I first created this solution, when I, when I found this solution, I just said I want it to work. So I'll publish everything. I just want it to work. And we're using the RabbitMQ image, the RabbitMQ version three and the dash management here in the tag means that we're also, we're using the image that has the management plugin installed and you'll see later why this is useful. Let's copy this command. Let's go to the terminal and let's paste it. So docker ps a, it's running, it's okay. Then we started the master node, right? Now we need a slave and the command is similar except that we're calling it, we're naming it differently. So it's rabbit2, the host name is rabbit2, and the node name, again, rabbit2, because they have to be different in order for clustering to work. We're using the same configuration, the same definitions, and we're linking it with rabbit1. So this means that uh, rabbit2 will be able to access rabbit1 via the Docker overlay network. So let's copy this as well. We'll paste it here. And for the second slave, same command as above. We just um, we just changed the name and the host name, like we did with Rabbit Two compared to Rabbit One, which is the master. And we also added an extra link statement here because every node needs to be able to see the other nodes in the network. And if if you look at this, you can tell how this can get pretty hard to maintain when you have I don't know ten nodes. Then you have you need to link to every node, but we have a more maintainable solution coming that coming up after after we take a look at this and we validate that this works. So let's paste this as well. And now Docker PS dash A. So all all our containers are working. And if we just look at the logs of I don't know the master, so Docker logs dash F um, rabbit one, right? Okay, so rabbit2 up, it knows about it. And I think rabbit1 should be somewhere around here. 
we're just scrolling through logs so yeah it should be somewhere around here but I'm having a hard time finding it so yeah either way let's just rabbit rabbit 2 oh yeah rabbit 3 so here it is here it is so everything is is working okay up until this point now let's switch over to Chrome and go to localhost 15672 which is the RabbitMQ management console and I was logged in if you're visiting it for the first time you would just see this interface and you'll have to type in with this setup that I have here guest and then guest and it will log you in and as you can see we have the three nodes here running we can look at queues so we have this queue named queue.user.created and it's on rabbit1 plus 2 so replicated or synchronized on two other nodes rabbit3 and rabbit2 and these are the features so it has high availability it's I think durable and it's auto deleted either way we're not going to go too deep into that exchanges same thing so it's this e.user created it has a binding to this queue which is replicated so yeah so if if you'd like to like here are the ports so rabbitmq is listening on 5672 this is the amqp port this is where your clients are usually connecting these are the clustering ports so 25672 this is the clustering port and this is the management interface currently we have the management interface exposed only on rabbit1 if you can if we can let's just go back here so we have the the management interface opened here exposed here so um here actually right we don't have it exposed on the other nodes but that's the the topic for for a, a, another video so if we move back oh yeah here export definitions so basically this definitions file that you saw me mounting over here as a volume it looks like this so it describes the users it describes the virtual hosts the permissions it describes the queues and where are they bound what routing keys the exchanges use the types of exchanges now I did not create this by hand and by all means I highly encourage you don't create this JSON file by hand you can just go here in the RabbitMQ management uh, interface just go and I don't know just add a queue you know just create so the drop down is like this so you just create a queue you name it you configure it you just tell it on which node they're synchronized so it it's, it will get replicated either way and after you create it and you create I don't know an exchange then you create a binding and stuff like that you can go over here and just hit export definitions and whatever you configured in this um, in this in let's call it administration interface right because it is an administration interface whatever you created through this interface will get bundled into this JSON file that you can later use for example if you launch a, a, a blank just a, a plain RabbitMQ instance and you would like to import them so you can manually import them from here right and you can just configure automatically or almost automatically configure your RabbitMQ setup so this is where you would use the definitions or you could use them like this and just mount them over into etc rabbitmq definitions.json and whenever rabbitmq starts it will pick that up and auto configure itself as i said this tends to get tedious imagine if we had 10 nodes here so it would be just a bit let's say crappy right but there's a better way so we can use docker compose for a local cluster it doesn't make sense for us to just type in 17 commands just to get that cluster running so if we'll head over to the terminal and just remove all the containers okay so we don't have anything here we have this docker compose yaml file and if we take a look at it so let's open it here it's using its version 3 so it's using the most modern docker compose version and I have 
three services here. So I have Rabbit One. It's using the RabbitMQ management and yada yada yada. You know, you know from from the Docker run commands that this is kind of the configuration. So host name, node name, whatever. We're mounting the configuration and the definitions, and we're exposing some ports. That's it. The only thing that's missing here, if we look at the other two nodes, so Rabbit Two and Rabbit Three, we don't have links. We're using this depends on. I don't know, statement property. And what this basically does is it tells Docker Compose, hey, don't start any of these containers until Rabbit 1 is up. And we have the same configuration for the nodes, but there's this extra network section. So what we need to do is we're, we're actually launching like all these containers are able to see each other by hostname, by IP, by whatever network identification we could think of, because they are under this rabbitmq-cluster network. Now, this network is not created automatically. So if we look in this readme, right, we need to create a network shared by all containers. I have mine created, so I'll just docker network rm rabbitmq cluster, just to start the, from a blank slate like you would. So we're going to have to run docker network create first of all and we will create this network so docker network ls these are like all the networks here so this one this is our network and then we would run docker compose up dash d so it will basically run everything we specified in docker compose.yaml in daemon mode so it will launch all of them in the background so docker compose oh sorry i'll just copy and paste it i'm too lazy to type so copy this paste it here and okay so it's creating rabbitmq it's prefixing um the container names with the the directory where the YAML file resides without the dashes. So it's rabbit one, one, rabbit one, one, okay, it's done. Then rabbit three, okay, and then rabbit two. It doesn't, it doesn't um, care about order, except for the fact that it has to launch rabbit one. So because we specified here that the other containers depend on rabbit one being online. So if we would, use uh, docker compose compose if I could type logs dash f I think this is the correct syntax so here are the logs for each each container so they are color coded and I think they're a bit in they're they're just mixed so let's just look at uh, rabbit one okay so this is the the master node so we have rabbit 3 up right and yes so the node is up and then the the actual uh, software so rabbit mq started and then rabbit 2 so they started in reverse order right and if we go ahead here and refresh the management interface so nothing changed we still have the same um, the same setup we still have the nodes here and we can even try to just let's just publish a message so uh, I think we could go to uh, the queue right or we could actually go to the exchange itself so we can just hit the exchange itself and publish a message I think that the routing key let's look at the binding so the routing key is user dot created so we could just publish a message here with this routing key and payload payload oh I, I wish I could just spell correctly user created we'll, we'll just publish a message right message published and if we go to overview or queues uh, and our queue we have ready one message total one message and we can even like there are no consumers connected right now but we can get the message and let's get it and requeue it so we're not consuming it we're not removing it from the queue but we will just to to look at the payload so here it is user created right but we still have it here like i have a refresh interval of five seconds it's still here but if we use get message 
and then we don't requeue it so we just consume it we eat it up right we have it here and this will reset to zero very fast five seconds just refresh let it refresh okay so everything is back to zero so I hope that this was useful for you um, if you'd like me to also create uh, Node.js consumer and producer scripts so you can just test just I don't know connect to one instance for pushing publishing messages and just connect to a different instance and consuming messages just so you can see that the messages are replicated and that everything works accordingly then let me know I plan on doing that but I it's not an emergency for me so if you'd like to see an example let me know and I can I can create that just use the comment section oh and here's a, a pretty nice tool that you can use to simulate your the communication through RabbitMQ in your application ecosystem so it's tryrabbitmq.com and it's this neat user interface where you can just drag exchanges queues I don't know a couple of consumers so we'll drag three consumers here and then some producers and I won't name them I'll just have to just option drag here and here so the producers connect to the exchange then the queue connects to the exchange and then we have the consumers here connecting to the queue so they can get messages from that and let's just create a binding key so this is a routing key routing key and we'll have the exchange be of type topic so it will use that routing key accordingly okay and then we can push a message so this is user created for example and routing key and if we send this message it gets distributed right if we push the next message it will be distributed to the next consumer and the next consumer and so on I think this is what it's called a round-robin distribution right if we don't specify or we specify a different routing key right it just it just sits in the exchange until I think it's dropped or something else happens so this is how you can use this tool so imagine that you would have a different queue here with a different consumer right that would take the I don't know the error logs for example so you would have this consumer here and if you change the binding key to I don't know error right you would have this publisher just send something to routing key right and it will get distributed here and let's say that an error occurs and this producer here just needs to send so an error occurred I think that I spelled that correctly and the routing key is error right and it will get distributed to the appropriate entity so to speak so I hope you found this video useful if you did subscribe to the channel hit the like button hit the dislike button if you didn't use the comment section to get in touch with me and ask ask me questions and um, I think that I will create a kind of a short series of videos like this one where I will detail how to deploy this setup to AWS or even to Azure if if this is a requirement so I think that this is about 20 minutes long uh, I know I said that I will give you highly distilled videos but I think that this is distilled enough I wasted two weeks to know all of this so you sticking 20 minutes to the computer screen I think that it's a good trade-off okay catch you in the next video bye